Well, so we will proceed. And in the previous uh, session, I was speaking about different frameworks that you can use as you create a, a strategy for your, for, for your business. And we saw that there are numerous alternative approaches or uh, frameworks that you, you can follow. And as I said, in this class, we will use a generic uh, process model for creating a strategy. And that is a model that takes into account the, the aspects uh, addressed in these different uh, alternative models that we, we have in the uh, literature. And this is how uh, our generic strategic process model looks like. It has four main stages. That is, as we try to create a, a strategy for our, uh, for our business, we will first start with strategic analysis. And that is uh, scanning the external and internal, uh, external environment and internal resources. And then we will do definition of strategic objectives. And that is defining uh, the vision, mission, and specific objectives of an organization. And then we will define the strategy, that is, we will formulate the, the strategy. And finally, we will discuss strategy implementation. Now, if you look at, at this model, it may suggest that strategic uh, formulation is a linear process. That is, it's a sequential process that you have to start with the stage number one, number two, number three, and four, as if uh, each of the uh, stages should follow uh, another. And that is what we call pres uh, prescriptive uh, uh, approach to stage, uh, strategy formulation. That is, you have uh, defined stages that you have to follow, and each one of them uh, follow one another. But Another way of looking at it is uh, emergent uh, strategy approach. That is, each of the uh, stages that we are following interact with one another. So the process is not actually linear, but it goes back and forth. So it's not that you start with stage number one and two, and then you cannot go to number one, but rather uh, it involves interaction that as you are in stage two, you may also uh, go back to stage one. And this is uh, what we call a uh, major strategy approach, that interactive uh, process, which goes uh, back and forth. In, real, in practice, uh, most organi organizations uh, use both prescriptive and emergent strategy, depending on which strategies are uh, formulated. So uh, you have. Uh, for instance, structured uh, annual uh, or half a, of, uh, half a year budgeting process, those are the kind of plans that are, can be very structured. Uh, they don't really need to be uh, interactive because in most cases, these are plans that are clearly defined in an organization and you can follow a structured approach without any uh, problem. But also, we know that the market uh, place is rapidly changing, which means there are some strategies. For instance, marketing strategy ca cannot be so structured. It has to follow the imagined approach in the sense that it has to involve the, uh, the, uh, the interactive approach, that the different stages that we are, uh, we are following as we create strategy have to interact uh, with, with one another. And this is what is encouraged that in today's uh, uh, business world, that you need to follow the emergent uh, uh, approach, that is dynamic emergent strategy, which means strategy f formulation has to be a continuous process. So you are not scanning the environment or your internal resources just once and uh, then you stop and continue with other stages, but it's something that you have to continuously uh, uh, conduct in your organization because we know that the technology that may be very superior today may not be as superior as it used to be uh, tomorrow. Things are changing, which means you have to assess your organization from time to time. It has to be 
a, a continuous uh, process. And that's why the emergent strategy approach is much more uh, encouraged or is recommended for that reason, because we recognize the fact that the environment is changing so rapidly, and we want to have an approach that uh, takes a, a continuous process uh, shape uh, each time that you can go back, conduct strategic analysis to assess the current situation that you are, you are, you are facing. And if necessary, perhaps change your uh, strategic objectives, change your strategy altogether, and even change uh, the way you implement your, your strategy. So this uh, echoes to the concept of strategic agility that we, we discussed when we were talking about business environment that things are changing and you, you have to be uh, flexible, being, being able to reflect the changes that are happening in your, uh, in your environment and adjust your strategy uh, accordingly. And that is possible if you follow this dynamic approach as opposed to uh, a rigid sequential approach. Now, if we follow the, the dynamic uh, digital business strategy, we'll have a different model that is slightly different from the generic uh, strategy uh, process model, but it includes pretty much the same elements. So in this case, first of all, uh, strategy formulation uh, process is considered as a process, as an ongoing process. It's not uh, a, a one-way uh, direction process, but rather uh, it's a cycle, that something that you do continuously. And this is what uh, businesses today are encouraged to, to, to do, that the process of formulating strategy is not done once and for all, but rather it's a continuous practice within an organization. So uh, uh, you always have to observe your environment, gather information, observe the, 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 the macro and micro factors that affect your, uh, your organization. Based on that knowledge, you have to formulate your objectives, uh, create a uh, strategy, and that is digital business blueprint, that how you can achieve uh, those goals. And then you implement. And as soon as you implement your strategy, you go back to, to the drawing table, observing again the environment. Because as the way uh, business environment uh, is behaving today, perhaps at, by the time you are implementing uh, your strategy, your competitors may have already come up with something else. Technology may, may change. The economic conditions uh, may not be in your favor uh, anymore, which means you always have to go back to the drawing table, scan the environment, see whether it's necessary to adjust your uh, objectives, if it's necessary to change your strategy, if it's necessary to change the way you implement your strategy, and go back again. So it's a continuous uh, uh, process. So in this class, we will go through all these uh, stages, one after another. And now I will start with strategic uh, uh, analysis. And this is comprised with uh, two aspects, and that is assessment of external environment and internal uh, resources. We discussed a lot about uh, e external environment in the last uh, two chapters, or at least when we discuss about business environment. So I will start with internal resources uh, uh, assessment. And then we will go to the second stage, third, and lastly, we will finish with uh, implementation. So when we talk about strategic analysis, and that is the first step uh, that you uh, you have to, uh, to take when it comes to strategy formulation, we are talking about three aspects that you need to address. First, you need to assess the internal resources that uh, your organization uh, has. Uh, we said in the introduction of this class that in order to create value, you need to have first resources. Uh, these are you know, the, the various inputs that are converted through activities in an organization to create uh, value. So in order uh, to conduct a strategic analysis, the first thing that you have to do is to conduct uh, assessment of internal resources. Second, you have to 
conduct uh, assessment of micro environment. Uh, specifically, uh, we will look at uh, assessment of competitive forces uh, that your organization is likely to, to face uh, in the marketplace. And lastly, you will have to conduct uh, assessment of micro, macro environment. So this is how strategic uh, analysis looks uh, like, ex what I've just uh, explained in the uh, previous uh, slide. But this is just a broader uh, uh, highlight of different aspect, uh, aspects that are covered in the uh, strategic analysis. So you have uh, external environment assessment, internal resources uh, assessment. And within this, uh, we have uh, individual factors. The, the, you remember the slate? Uh, yeah, yeah, model we discussed when we talked about it, the macro environmental factors, uh, social, legal, and ethical, economic, political, and technological factors. We, we discuss in detail the, those factors when we uh, address that topic. But also, we have to consider the, the various um, techniques that uh, uh, we use when it comes to strategic analysis. And this is, uh, we will look at uh, resource uh, analysis, we look at por portfolio analysis, sort analysis, demand analysis, and competitor uh, 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 analysis. So we will use various frameworks to conduct the, the analysis of these aspects. But you just have to bear in mind that the goal is to accomplish uh, the entire framework of a strategy. And now we are at stage number one, and that is strategic analysis. In the strategic analysis, you have various aspects that you have to address. This can broadly be distinguished as external environment and internal resources. And we, if you go into details, we have this. So don't lose the track. We, we are analyzing strategy, and this is still stage number one. So we will start by uh, looking at how we can assess resources. And the main resources that we are concerned uh, with when it comes to uh, a digital enterprise, number one are the various technological resources that your organization uh, need, financial resources, and human resources. So we, we know that from the previous uh, topic that we d discussed, and that is digital business infrastructure, Technology plays a central role when it comes to uh, success of a digital enterprise. So this is a core resource that uh, uh, your business uh, requires. But also we know we also need financial uh, resources. When you start up a business, in most cases, you will not start generating revenue overnight. It will take some time before you start uh, uh, generating revenue or start making profit. So you will need uh, financial resources uh, to help run the operations of your business. And also you need to have uh, human resources. And depending on the nature of your business, it, human resource could be the core resource that your, uh, your organization is. Uh, imagine you have uh, a consultant's firm. For a consultant's firm, human resource is like the core uh, resource because uh, it's actually uh, brains of your, uh, the people that are working for you that are actually creating value, the, the core value for, for your organization. But uh, all in all, all, all uh, organizations require uh, human resources as well. So we will uh, look at this. Now you have to make a, a distinction between resources and capabilities. Resources are the tangible and intangible assets that we use as inputs to value creation. So uh, all the different uh, uh, assets I have mentioned, like human resources, uh, uh, their skills, uh, technologies, all these are, uh, we consider them as resources. But having resources is a necessary, but not sufficient condition for being competitive in the market. And that is because you also need to have capabilities. That is, ability to use those resources into creating value. Organizations may have similar resources, but they may have different performance in the marketplace. And that is because they may have different capabilities that 
one company more, may be more capable in transforming the resources they have into value compared to other organizations. So when we talk about uh, resources as a source of competitive advantage, you also have to consider capabilities. That resources alone, having a powerful technology uh, is not sufficient to keep you on top of your game because if you don't know how to use that technology, if you can't uh, utilize that technology into value creation, it will be as useless as if it did not exist. So you have to uh, uh, consider the distinction between those uh, two. Now, in order to assess the, the, the technology status or the technological competence of your organization, there are various models that uh, we, we can follow. And these are frameworks that you can uh, follow to assess the technological competence of your, uh, of your organization. And these uh, models can be distinguished de depending on which aspect of your business you are uh, looking at. You remember we talked about uh, uh, digital business or electronic business uh, where we distinguished uh, two main sides uh, of a business and that is uh, uh, the sales side uh, e-commerce the part that where the enterprise interacts with its uh, customers and all the distribution agents that are involved as well as the buy side that is the interaction of the organization and its suppliers that enterprises or individuals that are providing inputs to this uh, organization so when you assess uh, the technological competence of your uh, organization, you have to distinguish between these two uh, sides because the kind of activities and interactions you have on this side are different from this side. How you relate to your suppliers is different from how you relate to your customers. And the kind of technologies and resources that you need may be different. So you have to make assessment differently for these two uh, for these two sides so we will first look at the uh, the sales side uh, part of the uh, e-commerce and with this we have a, a model that has uh, five stages that can help you assess the co technological competence uh, of your business and what this model says is there are standard five stages that at any point an organization can be. So what you do is to look at your organization and assess where do you fit in those stages. So the first one is image and product information. So at, at, at this stage, you, your organization does not even have a, a, a website. So you, you have what we call a, a basic brochure way where Mostly, you provide, say, pictures and information uh, about your products. P people can find it uh, randomly on the internet, but you are not keeping a proper website where there are detailed uh, uh, description or, or of the, your activities, or you are not uh, conducting your uh, business activities online. So you have a, a, a very a bare presence uh, uh, in the internet market space. And then you, you have uh, the second stage where you have a, a website and customers can collect some, if can get information, basic information about your products and say prices, but still they cannot do any transaction with your, uh, your organization. And then you have a third stage and that is customer support and service. So you provide some services. People can contact you, they can get description uh, uh, of uh, products, the, you can answer some uh, questions from your, your, your customers. And then you have uh, internal support and uh, service, uh, that is you create an intranet within your organization that the different functional uh, areas within an organization are connected to, to, to one another through an, an intranet and people are within your organization are supporting each other in, in the cause of value creation and serving uh, customers. And then the last stage is uh, transaction. And so this is a fully fledged uh, 
uh, online system where uh, you have all the you have an intranet within your organization. Uh, all the transactions can be supported uh, within uh, you, your uh, organization. So at any time when you are assessing the technological competence of your uh, of your enterprise, you need to look where do you fit in this uh, in this framework, and whether any position that you are in is suitable for the kind of market you are you are facing. So you have to consider uh, things like needs of your your customer. You have to consider the market condition uh, of your uh, of your business, and whether any stage that uh, uh, you have identified with your business is suitable for the kind of uh, situation that you are, you are facing. So this framework helps you, is, is a guideline to, to assess which stage you are business in, and it helps you to decide whether that stage is appropriate for the kind of market you are facing. Now, with, the, with, the, with that uh, framework and after assessment of your, your, your position uh, technologically, you have about six options, choices that you, you can make. The first one is whether you don't need a website at all. So this depends on the kind of uh, market and with today's uh, business environment, I think this is not an option. We see a lot of uh, companies, even those that are, were reluctant to having website, to having uh, online presence, at least they try to have a, a website where they can provide information because this is how today uh, customers interact with businesses. But this is one of the options that you can have, whether you don't need a website at all. And then second, you can choose to have a basic uh, web presence. So say you can list your company in one of the uh, websites that list uh, companies, at least when people uh, enter the name of your company, they can get some information about your, your, your business. So you don't keep a, a website, but at least you are somewhere on the net. Or probably you can have, a, say, a Facebook account, but at least people can get some information about you when they search you uh, on the internet. And then level two, you can choose to have a simple static information website. Uh, that is brochure, that brochure where. So you have a, a simple website that provides basic information about your organization, and that's it. Level three, you can choose to have a simple uh, interactive uh, site where People can search for your organization. Uh, they can make some interaction with you. For instance, you can have a, a, a page with frequently asked the questions. Uh, people can contact you. But just simple interactions with your customers. Level four, you can choose to have a website uh, where you support transactions with your uh, users so people can actually buy your services or your products uh, through your website. And then level five, you have full interactive sites supporting the whole buying process. So these are the different levels that you can choose depending on what is suitable for your organization. But as days go on, most of the, the, the options at the bottom become more and more irrelevant because these are uh, at least if you have a serious business today you are expected to have a website at least but for the matter of uh, uh, learning we said these are the different o options that you can select uh, depending on what you think is suitable for your for your business so that was the sell side the interaction between your enterprise and uh, your consumers. But also we have uh, the, the, the buy side, the interaction between your, your, your business and your suppliers and the various intermediaries that are connecting you with your uh, suppliers. So as we did for the, uh, for the sales side, we will also assess uh, technological competence of your organi organization with respect to the buy side of the uh, e-commerce. So again, 
we have a, a, a five stage uh, model that can help you identify which stage your organization is and what measures you should take depending on those uh, 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 on what you identify with in the model so level one you have there is no use of the uh, web when it comes to product sourcing or electronic integration with the suppliers so you are interacting with your suppliers completely offline there is no any uh, internet or online uh, interaction between your organization and your suppliers level two you do the re review and selection of your suppliers but the rest of the transaction are conducted offline so you are at a level where you can you do research for new suppliers or for the existing suppliers or uh, uh, online but uh, activities such as placing uh, orders and the like are still done uh, offline and then level three is uh, a slight uh, advancement where some activities such as uh, placing orders are done uh, electronically but still there is no integration between uh, information system of your enterprise and that of your supply so you do, uh, do it uh, online for instance uh, through electronic data interchange but there is no integration of uh, uh, information system between the two uh, between you and your suppliers and then level four you the orders are placed online with integration that at, at this stage you integrate your system and the system of your suppliers and in that way for instance you can do activities such as placing orders electronically through integrated uh, system and level three is total integration of your system and that of your uh, supplier so as we did for the uh, sell side uh, e-commerce you also assess where your organization is in this framework and whether that is the stage you should be given the kind of uh, competition you are you, you are facing so if you are a company competing with say Toyota that has a total integration of all uh, its suppliers and most of them are even physically located to assembly plants of Toyota it means you cannot afford to be somewhere like here because they are a way too advanced uh, uh, from you and there is no way you, you can compete uh, with such a company which means you, you have to uh, select a position that can give you uh, a competitive uh, edge when it comes to um, uh, what you are uh, with respect to the status of your uh, competitors when it comes to uh, technology uh, competence the second stage is uh, application portfolio analysis when we talked about uh, digital uh, business infrastructure we discussed about different uh, hardware software uh, networking facilities that digital enterprises uh, require uh, in order to deliver their services so you need as part of your uh, strategic analysis to assess the various applications that you have to, to today in your organization whether it's uh, uh, content management uh, application whether it's uh, ERP uh, uh, system that you have uh, whatever application human resources uh, accounting applications that you have you have to assess all of these and see uh, whether uh, these are suitable for the kind of market you are facing and whether they provide uh, uh, potential for your ability to compete uh, in the uh, in your market space given the uh, the, the future uh, uh, potential future uh, changes in the marketplace so portfolio analysis is uh, often used to select the most appropriate future internet projects uh, by looking at the applications that you have today in your organization it will be possible for you to decide uh, which uh, future technological pro uh, projects or internet projects that you should focus on so what you do by doing a, a assessment of the applications you have today it helps you to assess the competence 
uh, that you have the different uh, applications, the different software that to today you have, uh, and how they help you to create value, and how they can help you to sustain your business uh, in the marketplace. And this is uh, an example uh, of a portfolio uh, analysis for a business. So they distinguish uh, uh, two sides uh, where you have a future strategic importance information system. So you, 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 you assess the applications you have today based on the future uh, strategic importance against the current strategic importance of information system. Because with, as we said earlier, with strategy, you define the direction and long-term uh, uh, focus of your business. So we not only look at the present situation, but also we look at the future situation. So when you are making uh, assessment of the applications that you have today, not only that we consider the, the current strategic importance of the, these applications, but also we consider the future uh, strategic uh, importance of, of these systems. For, for this business, they have, say, HR uh, systems and financial systems uh, appear to be low in, on both uh, uh, dimensions. That for current uh, strategic uh, uh, purposes as well as future strategic uh, uh, importance, these systems are not that important. They are of low importance. But you have, for instance, a procurement uh, system, stock control system, distribution system that appear to be high on both uh, dimensions. That for current uh, strategic importance as well as future uh, strategic importance, they score quite high. So this is uh, uh, applications that will define your competitive edge in your, uh, your market space. This will help you to keep on top of your game uh, when it comes to the kind of market you are, you are facing. And then you have uh, here electronic catalog, e-commerce system, customer intelligence, which are currently not that important, but they are very high important when it comes to future strategic importance. And this is the opposite of this, that currently this is of high importance, but in the future it is of low importance. But uh, you have to know, this is a, a, an example of a business, and it doesn't have to be so for every business. As I said, depending on the nature of your business. For instance, for a professional uh, firms, uh, for instance, uh, accounting firms, PwC, Deloitte, uh, Ernst & Young, KP, uh, KPMG, you name. Those uh, uh, professional firms, for them, human resources is very important, extremely important, because that, that's where uh, 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 the core competitive advantage uh, uh, arises from, which means for them, HR systems that help uh, to, to, to recruit uh, top talents uh, from, from markets, that help to retain uh, talents in the organization, is here. That is of paramount importance, both at present and in the future. So depending on the kind of organization that you are, you are, you, you are an analyzing, any of this could be anywhere in this framework. So this is just an example, uh, but it differs from organization uh, to organization. And now we will look at uh, sort analysis as part of uh, strategic uh, analysis. And I, as I hinted in the beginning, sort analysis uh, stands for strength, opportunities, weaknesses, and threats analysis as uh, probably most of you have come across this uh, before. So this is relatively uh, very simple tool for, for uh, analyze, make it, doing a strategic uh, uh, analysis, but it's uh, quite powerful. And it helps you to analyze the internal resources that your organization uh, has and benchmark it against the external uh, environment that uh, you, you are facing. And when it comes to digital business or electronic business uh, context, a sort of analysis uh, can combine both to sort of analysis or strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats related to uh, corporate uh, uh, 
uh, area as well as functional uh, area. But also, it is possible to do sort analysis for each of these uh, uh, organizational uh, areas. Now, as we say, uh, sort analysis has high impact when it is used not, not, not only as a tool for assessing the current situation you are, you are facing, but uh, as, a, uh, as a, an, an approach to formulating strategy. So it's not only, it doesn't give you uh, any uh, benefit if it's, you use it just as a tool for assessing the situation you are, you are, fa you are facing, but also, uh, but in fact, it, uh, it becomes uh, powerful and useful if you use it uh, as uh, a source of providing input to your, to your uh, business strategy. So this is an example of uh, sort analysis where you distinguish the strength uh, that your organization has, the uh, weaknesses that you have, opportunities and threats. For, for instance, uh, for this uh, example, uh, one of the strengths that uh, your organization has is the, the existing uh, brand, the brand name. And that is uh, what we say it, pro it pro provides what we call brand equity. And brand equity uh, is the differential uh, impact a brand name has on a product to the uh, consumer behavior. So what if Coca-Cola uh, product did not have the Coca-Cola brand? Would it, would it be perceived uh, the same way uh, as it is perceived today? What if uh, an iPhone or any product pr produced by Apple did not bear that brand of Apple? Would it be perceived the same way as uh, we perceive it today? So brand can have a huge impact or, on a product. Sometimes we buy things just because uh, we, are, we, we know that a certain manufacturer or a certain uh, product is uh, reliable. And that gives us some sort of uh, assurance. So this could be a strength. So if you have a powerful uh, brand, this could be uh, a strength uh, for your business. But also another uh, uh, strength could be existing customer base. One of the challenges that today you will face if you will open a business similar to eBay is to break their customer base, that they are already established. They have an extensive uh, customer base, which you can hardly uh, steal from. And this is what most uh, uh, companies today are striving for, to create a customer base. It's not an accident that uh, Apple is trying to create uh, uh, devices with synchronization in, in, in a way that once you have one uh, device, it becomes so much easy uh, to integrate it or synchronize with other devices. And sometimes there are applications from their rivers that cannot work in their, uh, in their dev devices. This is an approach to creating a customer uh, base. Microsoft did it for, for many years, developed an extensive uh, uh, customer base. So if you have an extensive cu customer base, this is a strength uh, to your organization. Existing distribution. So this could be uh, a, a strength to your organization, especially if you have uh, entered into exclusive uh, contracts with certain distributors in a way that your competitors cannot access uh, those uh, distributors. So it could be a strength for your uh, organization. How about weaknesses? A weakness could be brand uh, perception. A brand is uh, a strength if it's unique and people have favorable per perceptions uh, about it and they have strong connection to it. But if you have uh, a bad brand name, then it, is, it has an, a negative impact. So a bad uh, reputation of your brand could be a weakness. Distribution uh, intermediary use it could be a, a, a disadvantage, a, a, a weakness. Lack of technology or skills on your part could be a weakness. Lack of cross-channel uh, support could be uh, uh, a weakness. And then you have uh, threats, uh, uh, opportunities and uh, threats. One of the opportunities be uh, possibility to uh, cross-sell. 
new markets that are available for your business, new services, possibility for alliances or co-branding. Threats could be customer uh, choice, extensive customer choices uh, th that you are facing, new entrants, that new businesses that are coming into the, uh, your, your market could be a, a threat. Your uh, competitors may introduce new products that will, can challenge your products, and that is a, a threat. There could be channel uh, conflict. So you, the point is you have to identify each one of these and come up with a strategy. So I say always leverage strength and maximize opportunities. That take advantage of the strength you, you have. Capitalize on the strength uh, your organization have because those are the factors that will help you to distinguish yourself, your business from your competitors. So, so you have to maximize uh, on those strengths. And at the same time, take advantage of the opportunities uh, y y you have. And then you need to address th the weaknesses. So it's not enough to just point at the weaknesses uh, that, that you, your organization has, but you have to take measures to reduce uh, these uh, weaknesses. And then you have uh, uh, the, 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 the threats. Use your strength to counter uh, the, 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 the threats that you are, you, are, you are facing. And likewise, when it comes to weaknesses, try to minimize uh, the, the, the weaknesses in order to make yourself less vulnerable uh, to, to the threats. So as I said in the previous uh, slide, it's not only enough to identify uh, these strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, but also you need to come up with a strategy to address each one of those. Take advantage of the strength your organization has and take measures to reduce weaknesses that uh, yeah, you have. And at the same time, address the threats by capitalizing on the strength and reduce your weaknesses to make yourself less vulnerable to threats. It's 4 o'clock, so I think we will stop here. Are you doing good with the assignment? Any problem? No? That's great. <laughs>